Welcome to the abs show. <clears throat> so, here with my pops. This is my pops. He's a scientist through and through. All he does is investigate shit like the past, history, um, anything to do with physics, with, uh, with extinctions. What else do you investigate? Light. Um, gravity. Gravity, uh, physics in general. Yeah. Physicist, but he also talks, uh, investigates a lot about history, right? Yeah, uh, history I'm interested in. Politics, no longer. <laughs> <laughs> Got out of that one. But you've been <laughs> investigating a lot about the Neanderthals lately. and Yeah. Why did you start investigating the extinction of Neanderthals? That was just a question popped into your head? or No, I started investigating extinction. And I started in, in general. Uh, dinosaurs, Neanderthals, every, every all subjects which are quite interesting for the majority of people. People want to know how the dinosaurs became extinct, how the Neanderthals became extinct, how the woolly mammoth became extinct. And you're not satisfied with the theories that are popular. Yeah, and and it all relates to physics in the end. You know, it all comes back to physics because relativists <laughs> say that we're going to live forever. Essentially, that's what they say. We're going to get out of the planet, we're going to go to another star system, we're going to colonize the universe, and, and so humans are immortal. We are gods. We're not human. And I'm saying we're about to become extinct. And okay. so in order to, to arrive at that conclusion, you have to first figure out how it is that the you know, previous species became extinct. What is the mechanism of extinction? What is the mechanism of mass extinction? What is the mechanism of a background extinction? That's how I got into the extinction business. And you started investigating the Neanderthals? First I started investigating the, um, the dinosaurs, which is a topic uh, I love. <laughs> and then of course uh, this leads you to uh, wonder about the Neanderthal. How did they become extinct? Because there's a difference. The uh, Neanderthals, uh, the uh, dinosaurs die in a mass extinction. Lots of them die at the same time. The whole uh, family, the whole order called dinosaurs, they, they get wiped out. Here we're talking about... They find that out through dating, when everyone died at the same time. Yeah, suddenly, they suddenly, they all they these, suddenly those bones disappear layers. from the layer of the rock, and, and so they say something happened here. Okay. You know. okay, okay. And that's, that's the mass extinction. But here we have... You know, here's the woolly mammoth. He outlived Neanderthal. Uh, you have uh, other animals like the woolly um, uh, rhino. Uh, there is yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, the woolly, woolly rhino. Yeah, yeah. You get all these animals. The deer. He hunted deer. The buffalo. He. Uh, it's really the. Um, the ancestors. Uh, of the yeah, animals. all the ancestors of all these uh, animals that we have today of of the cattle and so on. You know, they they, they outlived Neanderthal, yeah. and you, so he died all alone. And so this creates a big problem because, see, if he would have died in some kind of mass extinction, say, well, we know something happened here. Maybe a, a comet fell on top of all these shows. But here, happened. this it's Mother Nature singling out Neanderthal and leaving everybody it's, else alive. It's almost surgical. Like, yeah, yeah, it's like she's so, she's so precise. She just takes <laughs> Neanderthal out and so leaves everybody else in there. So this creates a problem. Yeah. And the way they try to solve this is by bringing man in. They, 90 to 99 percent of the theories out there have to do with man causing the extinction of the Neanderthals. We either killed them, uh, uh, we outcompeted them, or had more children, or whatever, or uh, we intermarried with them, which is the reigning theory that we have what is called a mixture. In other words, we interbred with the Neanderthals, and because we were a much larger population. Uh, they kind of um, diluted their gene pool in ours. Wait, it was um, a little late. It's a little pool in the in a in an ocean. That's okay. essentially the picture they want to paint. So Neanderthals. What is a Neanderthal? Because some people might not know. Well, uh, there's been a different species. They they're are, not human. They're not human. They're hominids. W what we're saying here is, if we look at what we f the bones that we find in the rock. What they found so far, what the, the, the general picture, the history that they want to paint is that there was uh, over two million years ago we had this Homo habilis. Homo habilis is a very archaic human that apparently gave birth to the next major level, which is Homo erectus. Okay. Homo erectus is the first human or 
first hominid that stands on two legs. Okay, and this happened uh, anywhere between two million years ago to maybe 800 or 700,000 years ago. Through a million and 200,000 years, they, these hominids ruled the planet. They, they, they expanded, etc. These hominids were everywhere on Earth? Uh, not everywhere, but they really extended from like, possibly, yeah. not confirmed, but very possibly, from England all the way to China. So that whole stretch of land, and Africa, by the way. So that whole stretch of land, including Africa, was uh, populated here and there, not completely uniformly, but here and there, there were bands of these Homo erectus. These pre-man men. Right. These are uh, proto-humans. Yeah, proto their, their brains were smaller. Uh, specifically, the brain is what they look at. Okay. Uh, not only and they look at the morphology, other things, but the brain size, you can see that it's growing from Homo habilis through Homo erectus. The next level is Homo heidelbergensis. Okay. Homo heidelbergensis uh, is apparently is born in Europe. His counterpart, Homo rhodesiensis, is born in Africa. They both apparently come from Homo erectus. In other words, Homo erectus in Africa evolves into Homo rhodesiensis, which is a level, the same level approximately as Homo heidelbergensis, who descends from Homo erectus in Europe. Okay. Okay, so we have these two. And then from there, uh, humans descend from Homo rhodesiensis in Africa, yeah. and Neanderthal, Homo neanderthalensis, okay. descends from Homo heidelbergensis in Europe. That's the general picture. Okay, so we... He's a, he's a cousin of ours. Yeah. Okay. A long-lost cousin. cousin. A distant cousin. Uh, they look the same? Well, well this, is, this is a good question, because what it all comes down to is whether we belong to the same species, or whether we are two, or simply two different races of the same species. You know, you have dogs, yeah. and you can have a Doberman, and he can have sex with a German Shepherd. They're differently morphologically. You can tell the difference between a poodle and a, you know, and a bloodhound. But they can have offspring. But they can have offspring because they're different races of the same species. And the question is, did Neanderthals belong to the same species as humans, or were, the, you know, were we the same species, two different races, okay. or were we two different species? Could we have viable offspring because, with them? That's because the if we could have viable offspring, then it's basically uh, opening the doors to this admixture theory that you mentioned earlier, where it's not that the Neanderthals died off, or they were surgically <laughs> removed, or whatever, it's that they just bred with us, and that's why they're no longer to be found. Yeah, in other words, uh, uh, the mixture theory, the interbreeding theory, essentially holds that they never disappeared. Which is the most popular theory. Yeah, right now, yeah, uh, because the gen geneticists got into the business, and they supposedly proved yeah. that we inter uh, intermarried them, we interbred with them, and we are the Neanderthals. We have Neanderthal okay. blood in us. That's, okay. that's the theory, that they never disappeared, they became us. That's the problem. That's the theory, and that's the problem. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So where do you start with this? What What was the the part that that, that first showed you that something was wrong with this theory? What caught your eye about the theory? <laughs> I didn't like the theory to begin with. Uh, the first problem I've got is that uh, again, are we the same species, or are we just two different races of the same species? That's that's essentially what's in the back of my mind. Uh, I have trouble with interbreeding in the wild because we don't see that very at all, really. We don't see it at all. And again, we have to determine what, what we mean by species and what we mean by race. If, you know, it's very unlikely that Mother Nature creates the same species in two opposite sides of the planet in two different environments, under still, different conditions, can that can still come back and interbreed. Yeah. And that's very difficult to believe, that humans would be invented by Mother Nature in Asia, in Europe, in Africa, you know, humans, yeah. and that we come back, we all develop like independently, and then we get together and we all can interbreed. That's very unlikely. That just doesn't happen. No, I don't, no. It, it, you know, it, it's very hard to believe that that's what happened. More than likely, you know, humans were born somewhere, and I think they were born in Africa. They came out, and then they became all these different uh, races. And given enough time, they would have become species. 
In other words, if we isolate the Chinese from the Africans from the Americans for a million years or whatever, a hundred thousands of years, then yes, uh, when you put them back together, they can't breathe because too, too much time has passed and they've been subjected to different environmental pressures. Okay. And that's, I think, what happened with the Neanderthals. They were separated by maybe around 500,000 years. We're rounding these numbers because they don't really know. They've got all these ranges for when the Neanderthals appeared on the face of the earth. But let's use that number, 500,000 years. That's a long time. And it's not so much the time. Time is important. Yeah. But more important is the environment. Neanderthal develops in Arctic Europe. It's cold. It's cold. It's freezing cold. He has no clothes. They always paint them in clothes. You, you go to the museum, they dress them up in designer suits. Is it because he'd have no need for it? He had no need for it because we got to go back one step back to Man of Heidelberg. He was already in Europe. And we have to go one step back. Man of Homo erectus was in Europe. And he was in England. In Arctic yeah. England. Okay. How did he survive the cold if he was if no clothes had been invented? So, so what they do, well, no, what they do is they go back and they try to say, well, yeah, we think he used clothes. You know, we're going to go back to, to, the, monkey. to the monkeys and say they use clothes too. I mean, <laughs> how far do they want to go? <laughs> Homo erectus did not have clothes and he lived in Arctic Europe. At some Europe. point, there was someone there that was living without clothes. Correct. And so, and, and, and all of them were without clothes. Homo erectus, Homo neanderthalensis, and... Uh, uh, I'm sorry, Homo Heidelbergensis and Homo Neanderthalensis, all three of them, throughout that whole period of time, they never saw clothes in their life. They lived with their bodysuit. It must have been should. really hairy. They were hairy. They were hairy. Uh, Neanderthal was the Arctic gorilla. Just like you have the polar bear, he, he's got this thick skin, and he can live there. Like you have wolves, they, they don't have as much you know, fat and protection as the polar bear, but they live in the Arctic weather, comfortably in, in Arctic weather. And Nanatha was the same thing. He 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 stepped on the on the snow with his bare feet. He didn't have sandals. Oh. He, he for him it was normal. Okay. We we go there and say, ooh, um, it's cold. <laughs> he didn't know what cold was. He had no idea what cold was. So so here you have this Neander Neanderthal. He's completely nude, hairy. Probably a very likely hairy or really fat, and and he had his his good protection of layer of fat. He was an Arctic gorilla, and here comes human. He goes into this weather, and he's he's probably going to be frozen to death. So he has to invent clothes. Yeah. I don't think he could have survived in Europe without clothes. So because see, they're used to the sun. Used yeah, to they, the they come out of Africa. Really they come out of Africa. They're born in near the equator, somewhere near the equator. They, they slowly move up north, and when the, the, they start feeling the cold, they say, well, I better put something on. Yeah, so they should have just turned around and gone back to Africa. <laughs> <laughs> ah, not, my, not my cup of tea. And, and, that's, and that's when you start seeing sewing, well, maybe the sewing needles come later, but uh, that's around the time that you start uh, uh, hypothesizing or theorizing, depending, you, you make the assumptions or you theorize that, um, that they invented clothes. Humans. Humans did, no, never Neanderthals. But humans must have invented clothes at some point in time because they were moving into the cold weather. Let me get this straight. Um, the Homo erectus went all over the continents. Again, Asia, England, Europe. England yeah. to, I would say, England to China and Indonesia. I'll just say Africa, Asia, and Africa. And Europe. Africa and Asia. Eurasia, Eurasia. Eurasia. Yeah. So we got Homo erectus everywhere. Pretty but, much. but remember, they die that, off in China, basically in Asia. Yeah. They die off. They don't. They don't make it for whatever reason. Yeah. Still unknown, unless we killed them too or admixtured them too. Not, not, God not. Knows. We came too late. They died off eight hundred thousand years ago. That's ah, the. Okay. There's no. There's no. <laughs> and we came. We came in no earlier than uh, than a hundred thousand years ago. Okay. So so we're seven hundred thousand years too late to kill the Homo okay. erectus. So they died, died off. Them. They died off. Period. But the Homo erectus is her erecti. <laughs> the erectus, whole, erecti, yeah, yeah. The Homo erectus is that went to Europe and Africa. Those evolved. Those evolved, evolved to the next. They, they they went to the next stage. They and to the up. next one. And to the next. And one. to the next one. Yeah. I mean, we we make them separate. Yeah. Remember, we made. There's really no chop. Yeah, there's no chop. It's, it's just a, a, a continuous. It's a gradient. It's continuous. Okay, but but here we but see an evolution. Then, but over there, there's no but evolution. Then eventually, the ones in Europe died off. Yeah, but then while the ones 
while the the while we <laughs> were still in Africa, the other guys still died off. Yeah, you got to explain how Erectus died in in Asia, no matter what. So Erectus dies in Asia seven hundred thousand years ago. How did he die? And what did, uh, what did Neanderthals? He... When did they die? And yeah, it was about forty thousand years ago. That's the date, that, the best date that we have today. Ooga. So what should we do with that mixture of paleontologists? Well, let me tell you what I think. Kawabanga!